wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hey, it's Nancy. You're out here and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And today, gosh, we always have such wonderful guests and guests who's visiting us again. It's Patty Conklin. And I'm so excited. And if you don't know who Patty is, she is a world class energy healer. Okay, a much sought after facilitator. She shared her experiences and she changes lives at hundreds of workshops, lectures, conferences throughout the last two decades. She's a frequent keynote speaker and presenter at Alternative and allopathic conventions. She is the creator of Color Works, which we're going to talk about, a visualization process that uses active vibration within your body to release or heal specific symptoms, emotions, or physical challenges. And before I bring her on, I was checking out her book. She's written a couple books, and one is God Within, and the other one is The Day God's Train Stopped. And, you know, I was looking at her book, and I'm like, this is so powerful. I have to read it really quick before we bring her on because I want you to know who Patty really is and this really says who she is so here we go sit back and relax and I'll tell you a little bit what Patty has to say chapter 21 in her book the day God's train stopped several years ago I had a profound dream I rode on a train with three couples each man looked exactly like the others and each of the women looked alike each couple was traveling with the sun and each sun looked the same Everyone had different personalities, but it appeared as though one couple with the sun had been produced in triplicate. The train traveled slowly, and many paranormal activities took place on board, such as a face coming out of a book. The passengers wanted to stop and get help, but I said, we'll be all right if we stay on the train. A white stallion ran next to the train, and one of the men climbed out of the window and jumped onto the horse's back in an effort to go get help. But as soon as he landed, the horse began screaming and sank into a bog. They both sank away out of sight. The train stopped, and everyone suddenly vanished. But Jesus and Mother Mary appeared. Throughout my life, she says, Jesus has appeared to me in dream during the most pivotal changes in my life, but this was the first and only time they appeared together. She goes on to say, Jesus said in a near whisper, this train is off the track. I looked out the window and down at the track and could see that it was off the track by an inch or two. I now give you a choice, Jesus said. You may get off this train and live your life as a normal human, or if we put this train back on the track, you will dedicate and devote the rest of your life to the work. You may ultimately lose your soul as a result of this work. Well, I didn't hesitate. I did get chilled on the tracks. I'd always felt that my life was God's and had known since I was seven that there would come a time when I would do whatever he asked me, he asked of me. And um, welcome to High Road to Humanity, Patty. That is just so powerful. Thank you so much. Yeah, that happened right before my 38th birthday. Wow. Yeah. So, so what, what God had told me at the age of seven was 38 to 42 would be my greatest growth years and 42 to 62 would be my greatest contribution to humanity. And mm-hmm. then I could come home then if I wanted. Well, I turned 62 in August and I'm still oh, here. So. Happy birthday. <laughs> so, so I guess the work is going to continue on, um, but um, taking a little bit more time to play. Okay. I don't feel uh, quite as, you know, those 20 years was hard press obligations. And, and while I'm still working uh, a lot, I'm not traveling. Um, okay. So, you know, when I travel, it's, it's to just uh, go enjoy myself a little bit. Right. So I'm home more and so on. But yeah. It well, was cool. Patty, how many healings have you done over the years? Do you know? You know, I know just in cellular cleansing, we're close to 10,000 now, but I would, I would say probably close to a hundred thousand, you know, because I work in 66 countries. So, so it has been 
You know, it's just been nonstop work for the last, um, you know, Delta and I have dated close to 3 million miles. And so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Delta that's crazy. My boyfriend through all these years. <laughs> <laughs> now, Patty, you can heal remotely though. If yeah. somebody calls you and says, and, and I want the audience to understand because, you know, when we talk about healing, you're healing on a cellular, cellular level. Yeah. And so explain how that works. If somebody has cancer, they call your office and then do you mind, what happens? What do you do? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of different things. You know, most of my travel throughout the years has been to lecture and do conferences and so forth. Right. Um, but when it really comes down to it, when I'm Skyping with somebody or even if we're on the phone, for me, they're sitting right here with me. There's, right. there's no such thing as time and distance. Can you see? Can you see their body? Like, are yeah. you, you have the yeah. gift of sight. You're psychic, yeah. right? Well, I'm not psychic. I, I wouldn't consider myself psychic. Okay. Um, I would consider my intuition from this moment backwards. So, so if they're critically ill, it's what took place throughout their lifetime to get to this critical illness place. And you see that you pick that up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so that's what I work with, whether we're doing just a session or a cellular remote um, work that, you know, they're too, they're too ill. Maybe they're in the hospital and, and, um, and they can't participate at all. Um, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the, it's the manipulation of the vibrations within their body, which is what's important. And, uh, I always say, Nancy, that, you know, I make a great vibrational manipulator. It just doesn't look good on business cards. Um, (laughs) that's essentially what you're doing is, is you are just, um, uh, changing the particles. Now people need to understand the emotions that got to, got them to point to where they are. Um, right. but, but for me, it doesn't matter whether they're across the world or they're sitting right here. For me, it's all the same. Okay. So a lot of my work, you know, in this last year, um, has been being here and being on Skype, being on phone or doing remote work. Okay. And you see a lot of people with cancer, everyone always says oh don't say that don't blame but isn't that what it is I mean why are people afraid to say what it is that's that's I think such a um, a misteaching that we've done throughout the years is I agree metaphysics a new age it's like don't give it a name don't give it a name and it's like well wait a minute it's already there I mean acknowledge it because the more you acknowledge it the more your fear level can come down and um, you can start working through the behaviors that created it to begin with. So, so it's, um, you know, it's incredibly important to validate yourself and not go into hiding or um, delusion or illusions that something's not happening. It is. And, and if you understand that when we get ill, our soul is going through a learning process. Right. And so, and so by helping get better or helping cross over, um, either way, um, the soul is going through the learning lesson that it needs. It's not about our consciousness. It's about what are they going through. And- I, you know, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to back up a minute and ask you, how did you know that you had this gift? How did you know what to do? I guess that's, you know, that's all. I thought about that yesterday because Patty's been on our show before and I, I love her to death and she's given me a meditation and we're going to talk about that because I really believe in your stuff and your book and your visual, visualizations. They actually work, you guys, because it's retraining your body and retraining your mind to think differently. But how did you know this stuff? How did you, did you just see or I'm confused on that one? Well, I mean, when I was three was when I had my first understanding of what was taking place. Um, you know, didn't know what to do with it um, as I went through life, but I was aware that I was different at three, that I could see things inside the body. And because they were coming true, I knew even as a young child that I was right and what everybody else was seeing was wrong. Okay. And so um, when I was 28, I developed both forms of lupus. I, I uh-huh. uh, developed internal and external and so, you know, I lost a kidney. I had a couple of heart attacks. I mean, just uh, everything wow. was taking okay. place. And, um, and God came to me and he showed me how to move color through my body. So I immediately started, you know, what color do I need to remove my lupus? And absolutely nothing happened. And okay. 
why would you tell me that? Um, and then I began to realize that I had to work with um, the emotion that was at the core of my lupus. And for me, I realized it was self-worth okay. that I had, I was working in PhD positions with a high school education and I was working, you know, being an overachiever to attempt to prove myself. So oh. as soon as I said, what color do I need to remove my lack of self-worth and increase my self-worth by 80%, the next day, my symptoms stopped. A year later, my blood work showed perfect, and it showed perfect every year um, since then. And so, mm -hmm. color works became the core when I started working at 38 in in this field. Um, it's been close to 25 years now. Right. Um, I I have used color works on on every single person around the globe that that I've touched. So you said we've got about one minute to break, um, but you, so what you do is, and I just want to get, get this right so I can do it and, and our audience can do it. So if you've got something, you can say, okay, God, you know, I, and, and it's the way you say it, right? So you say, Lord, how, how what words do you use? Lord, give me the color that I need to change my. No, typically a lot of people don't know the, they think they know the emotion that created the disease. Okay. So what you do is for 10 days, you say, what color do I need to bring into my consciousness, the emotion behind this disease? And then you journal and you don't look back at your journal every day. You just journal for 10 days straight. At the end right. of those 10 days, you reread your journal and you'll know exactly what that emotion is. Um, oh, and it uh -huh. usually won't be what you're consciously thinking it is. It is. Hey, you guys, we are here today with Patty Conklin and, um, she has a website, Patty. It's pattyconklin.com, right? If people want to go visit you or if they know someone who's ill, they can contact you that way. Um, that's how they make an appointment. Is that right? Because I, I think I made an appointment with you and you gave me a wonderful meditation and it's changed my life. We're going to talk about that. We're about 30 seconds to break, but um, we're here with Patty Conklin and you guys will be right back. We're going to talk all about her meditations. We're going to talk about color works. We're going to talk about tone works and um, all those neat things that, that she does and how we can heal ourselves. Because I said to Patty, I want people to know how to do it themselves because not everybody has the ability ability um to call and make an appointment so we'll be right back hang on we have more stories to tell. <laughs> i just love you patty you're so oh. cool <laughs> i'm like i want to do this i want to do the color thing well now and i can tell you this and ben's listening but ben listens to all my stuff so i don't care but um uh, i go into the pool now and jesus is there in my wow. unconditional love he's there in the forgiveness or the unconditional love? The unconditional, love? no, not the, the unconditional love. Okay. Yeah, he's in the pool every day. Yeah, yeah. He's in the pool. I, that's so cool. And there's there's people who will be, you know, because if it's a contentious, like if we go into an intensive where I'm bringing out their subconscious to their conscious, and, you know, we'll get in fights. I mean, I'll fight with people and they're like, you're wrong. I'm like, I'm not wrong. And by the time they get ready to go into the forgiveness pool, I'm wow. usually the first person there. And then Jesus will be the second person because he'll be second. <laughs> person. So, uh, it's well, it's just been, going. it's just been, as I've done it, it's progressed, uh -huh. you know, and my father passed and now he's there every once in a while, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. and my sister's there, she's passed. And so it's just really interesting yeah. to see. Um, and sometimes I never make it to the pool where I get rid of stuff and I'm like, oh, I have to make it there because I got to get all that yuck out of myself right. and all of You know what? I mean, it's, it's trusting your body to tell you what, right. you need. I mean, you know, those are guidelines. All right. We're 30. He says 30 seconds yeah. till we're back. He's are you watching it? I love this because he's coming up on my screen. So, cool. So you know, when he's doing the time down, I'm, I'm there. Cool. <laughs> That yeah, ma it makes it exactly easier. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it does. Yeah. It makes it easier because we have three commercials. So, yeah. all right, I'm going to talk about. We want to thank you so much for listening to High Road to Humanity. This is where Nancy and her guests tell stories that will guide you and enlighten your mind and soul. Now, welcome back to the High Road. 
Welcome back to High Road to Humanity. And we're here today with Patty Conklin. And Patty is talking to us about how she heals people and how she uses color. And, you know, Patty, um, I know you, you said you've got a new book coming out. What's it about? Can you give us a little, like, sneak peek? I, I will. It's called uh, Enabling the Labeling. And, okay. and the reason that I chose to go with that is because we have become such a fearful society mm-hmm. that when a doctor gives us a diagnosis, a prognosis of our child, we immediately go into fear. And what I started finding out, especially with children who had, you know, different physical issues and so forth, you know, maybe right. legs aren't strong or whatever is the parents are like, okay, well, the doctor said we have to do, you know, physical therapy four times a week. We have to do this, 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 this. And we forget that they need to be kids. And so, and so we've gotten to a point where we get the diagnosis. You've got fibromyalgia. This is what it's going to be like. And our mind just goes right in there. And so we're enabling the labels that other people are giving us instead of saying, no, you know what? This is something, okay, that's what they're calling it. But that doesn't mean that I need to live with it. And um, and it's just really encouraging people to come back around and say, okay, that's just the label. That's not change the mindset. You're saying change the mindset because they put us in this mindset and then it's in our head and then it doesn't leave because we feel because we've given it to ourselves now. Exactly. Now we have what they said. And so we've become enablers. You know, and, and it goes right back to, you know, early, early years where somebody, you know, it was a hypnotherapy uh, client. This is, you know, 20, 24 years ago or so. And, right. um, and he, he was in the office cause he had severe back pain and we were using hypnosis for the back pain. And he, um, he came in one day and, you know, he got relaxed in the recliner and he was just like. He was, he was in an altered state immediately and I brought him right out of it. And I'm like, what happens when, when you go into these back spasms? And he's like, well, the doctor said the best thing to do is to lay down. And I've got the best boss because he lets me lay down on the couch in his okay. office until it's time to leave. And I go home and I climb in bed and lay down. And my wife is so precious. That she brings me food and, you know, and feeds me. And I've just got such a loving support system. And but I'm he like, keeps laying down, Patty. Down, Patty. <laughs> what a reason to keep up the back issue. You know, why get rid of it? I mean, everybody treats you wonderful. And, and once that clicked in his brain, and he's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, it's, you know, you're not asking for what you need. Um, the back issue has now become the label that allows you to be fulfilled by the others around you. Oh and um, as soon as you understand that, understood that the back issues went away and it's as simple as that you know it's it's like you know okay well you know we see a lump in your breast and you know we need to get it treated you know looked at further because it might be cancer and people will go into the oh my gosh you know i've got cancer and um and then the label all of a sudden creates the disease if the disease wasn't there and their fear is is strong enough they'll create it and right. so, you know, understanding the body listens to every single word you say. It does. Well, yeah. And you talk about that. And I like that because I talk about that. People don't realize what you say makes a difference. What you say creates your reality, right? Can, yeah. Please talk absolutely, about that. A minute. Absolutely. What you say creates your reality. And the more emotional and the more fearful you are um, is what's created. The body's kind of sitting back. The body's very literal. And so, you know, you can go to the gym every day and work out every day and then stand in front of the mirror and go, gosh, I'm so fat. And the body goes, well, all right, I can do that for you. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, take in the fact that you hit the gym every day. It's taking in what you fear the most or, or what you're obsessed about. And so a lot of times, you know, we get so ill. And I mean, we really are ill. But it's understanding that if you started saying to your body, thank you so much for being healthy, that mm-hmm. the body in and of itself would start shifting. Now it takes longer. You know, right. it's, it, it's, you know, I, I equate it to building a high rise, you okay. know, it's a year, year and a half to build a high rise, but it only takes minutes to bring it down. And, and our body's the same way. It takes a long time to get it in an incredibly positive, healthy space 
um, you know, at times. We, right. But for most of us, it's that, you know, baby step up. Okay. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to share a story with you, which I've never told anybody, but I'm going to tell you guys today. Awesome. So I do this. <laughs> I'm thinking about this as you're saying this. So I do this um, color thing with my chakras because we have the chakras. So each chakra is associated with a color, right? right? So I was a little, I was about 10 pounds overweight. So I would do my base chakra and say, you know, I always say, uh, you know, clear, cleanse, protect and empower my root chakra. And yeah. then I do, you know, and then I use orange for my groin chakra and say, please, you know, clear, protect and empower, you know? And so when I got to my solar plex chakra, I say, please, uh, I say, please clear, cleanse, protect, empower, and make smaller my solar plex <laughs> chakra. Well, I finally have lost my weight. And I, part of it's the wine, but part of it that I stopped drinking, part of it is, I'm telling you, Patty, I keep saying I want a skinnier middle, and it's given me a skinnier middle. Now it's taken me probably a year to do it. Um, yeah. But you're right. You're exactly yeah. right. That's right. That's right. You say positive. And you. And <laughs> Don't buy into, you know, if your body's hurting, the best thing you can do with it is to thank it for being healthy. Okay. And, and, you know, again, I don't want people invalidating what's going on with their body. If they're in pain, they're in pain. Right. Um, but they need to also understand that if they're thanking their body for being healthy, they're starting to give it instructions to start feeling better. Well, yeah. And when you said that, it made me think of that because whatever you say, whatever you tell your body. So if you get up in the morning and say, oh my God, I'm so tired or I feel so bad, then right. that's how you're going to feel. That's how you're going to feel. And and if your spouse gets up and, you know, or partner, whatever, and, and uh, say, how do you feel this morning? Let's say you've been going through a really rough, you know, physical time um, or an illness. And they say, how do you feel? And you go, you know, I just, I really hurt this morning. You know, I'm really stiff and everything. Your body goes, okay, I can do that. But if you say to your partner or your loved one, thank you so much for asking. You know what? In 10 minutes, I'm going to feel terrific. There you go. Because, because you're not going through the litany of what was wrong, but you're giving your body the instruction that it can start feeling better. So you're not invalidating the fact that you had a rough night. Right. Validating the fact that you had a rough night without speaking the words and you're giving new instructions to your body. And I think that it's just understanding. I always want you to be real with yourself. I always want you to validate. Don't ignore how you're feeling because, you know, as we as we've said before, you know, people have this thing. If I mention that word, then that's what I'm going to get or I'm going to make it worse. No. It is what it is. Your body, we all go through these different phases and stages and so on and so forth. And um, and once we recognize and are willing to accept the fact that that's what's going on, then we can get to the emotion behind it and start right. getting rid of it. Right? You know, and when you do this work, do you, I, and I know, see, I really believe it's obviously it's the Lord that's doing this, yeah. that's clearing us. And it's not me, it's God. When you work with people, do you help them connect to God? Because I read in your book, and I feel the same way. You say you're connected to God 75% of the time. You're really just connected. And I feel that way as time has passed yes. for me, too. So is that something you do you help them connect with God? Absolutely. I mean, I think the work, especially, you know, because everybody gets homework with me. All over okay. I know, right? You know, they get homework and, and the color works or the, the healing pools, whatever it is, um, helps them reconnect. And so sometimes there was a, a lady a few weeks ago who just felt disconnected from God. And so we just worked with moving her into her heart center um, and into, you know, her divine spark so that she could start feeling connected again. But it's understanding, you know, those of us who are practitioners, we're just, we're just conduits. That's it. Right. Right. And, um, and the, and the more you clear your own body, the better conduit you become. Right. And, and so it's allowing yourself then to, to be that conduit so that that person and God can go through. And that's why, you know, there's, there's never any security of, Oh gee, this will work, you know, just do it this way and it'll work and you'll be fine because if your soul and God are, got a different agreement going on and 
you have yeah. to experience whatever. Then the practitioner needs to become the support system and figure out how to give them the homework so that they're feeling directly connected and can do it themselves because it's all about empowerment. Well, yeah. And now you, and when you say that, it makes me realize, okay, so we all came down here to learn. We all have lessons to learn. We all wrote our story before we got here, but we have to live it. So we learn our, our lessons. So what you're saying is a lot of times disease is a lesson to be learned. And sometimes we don't always heal. Is that, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. If the soul okay. is meant to experience something else. And, and, you know, the important thing is, is understanding you've got 10,000 different ways you can walk from point A to point B. Right. And so, you know, you look at, you look at uh, children, whatever, who are wheelchair bound and so on, and they're having a blast. And it's other people who look at them going, oh, that poor kid. And it's right. like, you know, they're, they're just living life a little bit differently and walking a little bit differently than we are. So we get into a lot of judgment when we look at people who are sick. Instead of looking at them of, thank you, dear God, for the gift that this person is going through right now right. in their soul's learning lesson with you. And, and, you know, I think if we started understanding that there's nothing to fix you know we just did a pin recently on yes. which was about <laughs> flowing and not fixing because fixing is the most base human form of ego and judgment is when we feel we need to fix something for someone else and is fixing different than helping because as a as a intuitive i always want to help people because i know things yeah is that is that we had about one minute to go but is that different yeah the difference is this the difference is between judgment and discernment judgment okay. means i have an attachment um i have an emotional attachment or i have an expectation of the end result okay. discernment means you're my equal and i will help you but i don't have any emotional attachment as to whether or not you get better okay. and if i have an emotional attachment as to whether you get better i'm in judgment right hey guys we're going to be right back we're here with patty conklin and we are talking about energy and how it works and how to clear ourselves and i'm going to talk to her about color works and tone works when we get back from the break because i want to understand the difference and i read your book uh patty but i want the audience to understand and and the whole goal today guys is to help you clear yourself um so that you can live a healthy happy life we'll be right back we will be right back on higher. I will tell you, I really enjoy doing the show since I've seen you. I, everybody that comes on has something that I learn and the audience learns, and it's just yeah. been fantastic. It's been yeah. so much fun yeah. to yeah. talk to all these different people, and they all are so interesting, and they all have these like really cool, unique yeah. gifts, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I had um I had Echo Bodine last week. Do you know who she is? Uh -huh. She's the one that they called in after ghost to, cause she can see ghosts. Uh -huh. She's like, a, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And she was really interesting. And she talked about uh, intuition uh -huh. more than anything. Right, right, right. She talked about intuition more. And I thought that, cause I've had a lot of people say, Patty, um, you know, think with your heart, not with your head lately. Right. And that's, really good because your body doesn't lie i get that part exactly. but then she said well your gut go with your gut because that's oh, god's yeah. voice and i love that yeah yeah the gut is you know and, and people will use that you know the doctor will say well you know this doesn't make sense but i'm going to go with my gut and you know it's basically going with their intuition but you know children i mean they're intuitive they see my my grandson was walking in the house the other day and my mother died long before he was born right, and we yeah. don't talk about my mother i mean you know it's just not that big part of our family and he's walking in the house and he's like oh ma look there's my great grandmother ellen your mom oh my gosh and i'm like what and he's like she's right there can't you see her and i'm like no how would you even know her name for crying out loud but he's six so he's still in that open stage of and he's like there's other people in your house. Have you not seen them? And I'm like, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> well, he's got the gift. But Patty, doesn't that tell you he's got your gift? Absolutely. And the other one has, you know, the, the two boys are 50 days apart. Um, they're cousins, but they're more like brothers. And the other one has my energy capability. 
and um, and this one has my site, and he's just been he's just been For thirty seconds. Watch thirty seconds still back. So yeah, yeah it's, that's it's, crazy. It's crazy. <sighs> but aren't you happy? Are you aren't you happy though? In another way that well, they I'm have. Sure have to live another 20 years so he could take over the business he's like i don't want the business and i'm like you'll make money and he said okay <laughs> <laughs> he's good with I'll it take now. Over the business. <laughs> we want to thank you so much for listening to high road to humanity this is where nancy and her guests tell stories that will guide you and enlighten your mind and soul now welcome back to the high road Welcome back to High Road to Humanity, and we're here today with Patty Conklin. Patty's written two books. Um, she's the author of The Day God's Train Stopped, and she's also, also the author of God Within, and you can pick those up at Amazon. You can visit her website. It's Patty Conklin, so it's P-A-T-T-I-C-O-N-K-L-I-N.com if you want to find her. Patty, I saw on your website you do a lot of retreats. Do you, Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, we had just started those. I I had had this house remodeled um, two years. I came off the houseboat because the the children were reaching a stage where they um, uh, could run off the boat. My daughter oh. was concerned. So okay. I bought the house, but I built it with the intention of when I die, it will be a homeless shelter or a house for Oh, wow. Years that my children would decide, you know, who needs rent free for a year um, right. to get, you know, get back on their feet. So it's this inviting mini oasis swim spa, but you know, a counter that feeds 10 people in these huge rooms. And so um, I put the house on the market last year cause I'm like, I need to get back to water. And, <laughs> uh, and I sat there and I thought, you know what? this house was built to be a retreat center. It was built to bring people in. Okay. And so we just started the retreats and um, because I'm off the road now, so I'm not surrounded constantly by people. I don't okay. want to go back out on the road. Um, but so eight people a month um, can come and, uh, and just spend time. And, and how long do they stay with you? It's a, it's a Friday night all day, Saturday, and then Sunday until three. And okay. so they come in Friday evening and uh, my daughter-in-law is a gourmet chef. So she's making vegetarian meals and regular meals. Right. And, um, and, and so, you know, it's just been, it's been really intriguing and it's like, you know, I'm not going to let critically Ill, Ill people come in because, you know, then it's, it, then we're really dealing with that, but it's the emotional stuff or, you know, maybe you've got Crohn's disease or something like that, but it's really just, sit down, have a chat, you know, have a, have a glass of wine, get in, you know, relax and just kind of a talk to uh, retreat. So it's not coming in and, Oh gee, you get this hour and, you know, break out the hours. It's me just okay. kind of hanging out with everybody and That's have cool. a group discussion of, you know, what we want to do or meditations and, and right. uh, go gemming, you know, if everybody's on board to, to jump in the cars and, and That's cool. go an hour away and go gemming and get some emeralds and some rubies. And, now, where and are you? Her. Where are you located, Patty? I, I am in the foothills of, of the North Georgia mountains. So okay. I'm right in Atlanta and Chattanooga. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, so so you guys go gemming. I want to go gemming. <laughs> That's cool. You know, when I'm teaching Nancy, I will take my students over there when I'm teaching vibrational training. Okay. And, um, and they'll, they'll get a gem and it's covered in, in dirt. And, and if they can tell me the vibration of the gem and they clean it off and it's right, they get to keep it. And if it's wrong, I get it. So oh my goodness, I love it. So you're teaching people how to use their intuition. Absolutely. How, how to use their intuition, how to understand vibration, um, you know, because the two go hand in hand. Okay. Um, I want them to understand what how, what their intuitive gifts are. You know, we're all different. Right. And so my job as a teacher is how do I help you understand what your intuition is and help grow that? And then also then to understand vibration, not only in your own body of where you have a blockage, um, but to everything around you. 
and um, and to really understand the frequency and, and the frequency component, which is so important. So right. the intuition of how do you grow your own intuition? How do you trust your gut? How right. Go you know with that gut feel and understand you're not you're not psychic. You know, you, again, there's 10,000 different ways to go into the future. Okay. Um, but you can follow your intuition and your gut feel of this feels right for me. Right. Feel right to me this mm -hmm. medication feels good to me no you know what only half of this medication feels good to me right That's in your gut your intuition and then understanding your body if you are taking medication or you're doing something specific how is your body's frequency handling that and if right. those are in sync awesome if one no. drops you need to adjust I have a question while you're talking about this because it seems like and I can only go with myself uh and I've not, and I read a little about this, but I want to get your take on it. So as I become more intuitive, I've gotten a lot of cramping and I can feel a shift in my energy in my body. My legs cramped so bad one night. I don't think it was anything other than, and I mean this sincerely, my, uh, my whole, um, vibration has changed. Yeah. And I think that's part of it. Have you heard that before? Absolutely. And one of the things that's so critical if you're using your intuition, if you're reading people or you're aware of your surroundings, you've got to understand potassium and magnesium are the first thing that drops. And so if you're actively doing something, you right. need to eat a baked potato, sweet potato, I don't care which, but you've got to get your potassium and magnesium back up because that's yeah. energy work that will, that will disappear from your body. Well, you hit it right on the head because that's what I've been taking, potassium and magnesium, yeah, yeah. and I've been using the magnesium cream. So yeah. that's why it's depleting so much because the more work you do and the more connected you are with the divine, it depletes it. That makes total sense. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's, okay. It's, it's exactly it. So, so it's, uh, you know, it's getting like if I'm on stage, I need steak and a dark beer when I get off. I, I don't care if the steak's even cooked. Just give me give me protein and give me a dark beer to ground me. Um, okay. And then a little bit later, give me a baked potato because baked okay. potatoes, potatoes have the highest level of potassium, magnesium in them. And, Thank you uh, for that. Because not, yeah, a, a banana, it you know, can help, but um, potassium and magnesium comes most from uh, potatoes um, or sweet potatoes. Huh. Yeah. That is so crazy. I'm really glad I asked you that question because I've been wondering about that. <laughs> grounding roots. Yeah. Ground roots. Yeah. And it's really important that we ground since you mentioned that. And I've talked about this with a lot of different people on my show um, and everybody grounds differently. But, um, you know, it's important that we ground because a lot of times all this stuff happens in our lives and we come out of our bodies. Can you talk yeah. about that for a second? Yeah. I think the most important thing to grounding, and I've taught it for years, and I've had arguments with many practitioners, <laughs> should say arguments, disagreements, because I don't argue. Right. But my feeling is you should, if you're, if you're a practitioner, your goal is to be grounded every second of every moment of every day. Because if you have to stop yourself to ground in order to work, then that tells me you're living two lives. You're not, you're not grounded all the time so that no matter what happens, you're in sync with the universe. Um, what it tells me is that you're out of sync unless you choose to, um, you know, or need to go in to, to work with someone. So you should be grounded every second of every day. And that's a so so if you get up in the morning and I've been going outside and I got this, I have this tree and I kind of ground myself with that tree, but then there's times during the day where I feel like I'm getting out of my body again. And then I just think, okay, well, I got to bring some light down into my crown chakra. And I do that. That's not good. I need to no, reground. No, you need to reground. So just close your eyes and imagine that hugging that tree. Hugging, okay. Go next to that tree. So maybe you do it every hour throughout the course of the day for a month or two until all of a sudden you realize the tree's with you. I understand. No matter, no matter what time of day it is, the tree is with you if that's what grounds you. Right. Well, because, yeah, like, because a lot of times, and, and I've never really talked to anybody about this, but I'll ground in the morning and I just cannot talk about myself. I don't know how other people feel, but I, I teach people to ground and I tell them to ground, but I never thought about it. If it kind of seems to wear off, then you need to redo it. 
that makes that makes a lot of conscious sense. of it you know oh. and and take months to be conscious of grounding so that so that uh, you don't have to stop because you know, in, in many ways, like I said, you're just kind of living two lives. It's like, oh, if I'm doing healing work or, you know, being a practitioner, I'll ground. But it's like, well, as a human being, we should be grounded. All the time. Okay, all the time. All the time. And you, and I think it's because people aren't grounded because they don't want to be here. They want to escape. And that's where you see the deal with drinking and the prescription drugs and all that kind of stuff, because yeah. people just don't want to be here. They want to escape from it all. But then I always realize, well, if they just grounded and they connected with God, they could get rid of some of that, the well, other if, stuff. If they just understood that life in itself is a wonderful adventure. It doesn't have to be a hardship. And even if you're going through what you perceive to be a hardship, it's not a hardship. It's a learning lesson. And so I call that the SHIT effect, the spiritual spiritual human in transition. And the more you get hit with it, the, the stronger the learning lesson that you're going through. And you'll wake up one morning and you'll feel this whoosh and you'll just know you're through it. So when rough time hits, understand that your soul is going through a learning process you can choose to look at it as a horrible thing taking place but you can also choose to say wow i am deep into this shit and i'm going to be out of it soon and the longer i'm in it the 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 greater i'm learning and so it's how are we going to perceive our life you know how are we going to phrase it and use our vocabulary and verbalize what's going on but with a positive spin gotcha and, and you know, got about have- one minute patty um you know when we come back and i keep saying this i want to talk about tone works because i don't know about that and i i want you to talk to everybody about that okay. and um and i do want to talk about the meditations because i mentioned it at the beginning of the show and you've got some fantastic meditations and i don't know if people can pick up your cds or how that works if they can download them <laughs> Amazon, they can, they can okay. do it for so regular CDs. Yeah. Okay. You guys, she's got really good meditations and I can attest to that. And they're actually life-changing um, that, that you need to, and the one that I use, I'll just throw it out there is the, is the pool. It's right. The pools, the pools that forget, uh, well, yeah. Healing pools. Okay, guys. So if you really want a good meditation, because I always find it, it's hard to forgive. So that's the one where you go in and you forgive people, you know, and you forgive yourself. That's the, I like that because you forgive yourself. Hey, we'll be right back. We're here with Patty Conklin. We'll be right back with the high road and more. You always give such good information. (laughs) This always just goes so fast. I know. Well, I enjoy it. Now, when you get your new book out, will that go through Sarah or will she tell me or will you tell me or how will I know? You know um, um, Bob Friedman passed away. Um, with, I know. Uh, she told me that. So, so his son, Jonathan, is taken over. Okay. And, I know Jonathan. Do you? I don't. He think- did the cover on my book. Ah, well, I, um, uh, I haven't talked to Jonathan yet. I'm You'll like sure him. I'm pretty sure they'll pick up the book because... You know, the book came out in 2014, and I'm still receiving royalties, which is really a rarity after this amount of time to still be wow. royalties for the for book. For this one, for The yeah. God Within. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I think they'll they'll pick up this one. I had just wanted to give him some time yeah. from when his dad passed um, to uh, before I contacted him. I mean, you know, he's got Neil Donald Walsh and Richard Bach, and he's got a lot more important people than me. But um, Oh, but- come on, Patty. I- I think you will. Well, yeah. when I first did my book, Wake Up, the Universe is Speaking to You, I sent it to Sarah and she hooked me up with Jonathan and Jonathan yeah. did the cover oh, and yeah. he put it all together for me. And uh, what a nice guy. And it was a pleasure, to be honest Beautiful. with you, to work with him. So yeah, I need to contact him because we've got to start the negotiations because, you know, when you when you go through a publisher versus self-publishing. Um, you know, you give up all rights, you know, they, the only thing they don't ask for is your, your firstborn child. Um, <laughs> so, wow. so we'll have to go through the contract process again, but it's good. It's good. Well, I hear, okay. I, well, they didn't, I gave them one, they didn't take it. So, <laughs> 
So now I'm putting all the stories out to the magazines. I write for the magazine. So I'm just giving all my stories to them and getting it out there. I figured what the heck, right? It's important. It's important to do it. I know. We want to thank you so much for listening to High Road to Humanity. This is where Nancy and her guests tell stories that will guide you and enlighten your mind and soul. Now, welcome back to the High Road. Hey, welcome back to High Road to Humanity. And this is Nancy, you're out your host. You know, I need to publicize myself, I guess. Hey, you guys, if you need a psychic reading, I'm doing them. You're welcome to visit my website. It's nancyyearout.com. That's N A N C Y Y E A R O U T.com. And schedule an appointment with me, and I'll be happy to help you guys out. Um, we're here today with Patty Conklin, and we're having a great conversation. Patty, I wanted to ask you about, we talked a little about color works, but tell me about tone works because I don't understand what that is and that's um, probably because I didn't read enough about it but it is it's gross <laughs> oh my goodness okay well I didn't know that gross, but it's our highest selling CD around the world um it really is, you know there's there's two active frequencies in the world and it's color and it's tone okay and it. everything else is a passive energy so Reiki healing touch therapeutic touch and so on work with the auric fields Active frequencies work within the cells themselves. And so after years of, you know, talking to people about tone, my, my, then, my son, who was executive director then, said, we need to create a sound, you know, a tone CD, uh, tone works. We've got color works, but we need tone works. And so he and I sat and listened to music for three days. Because the thing is, you want music that's got a wide range of instruments, no vocals, um, you know, what's going to really, what's really going to feel right. Mm -hmm. And so we went through three days and all of a sudden this music came on and we both looked at each other and went, Oh, that's horrible. But our bodies were vibrating out of control. Really? And so, yeah. And so we knew that that was, that was the, uh, what we needed to go with. And so, uh, it has become our highest selling, um, CD around the world. Um, and what is the name it. of it? It's called, it's called um, Tone Works. And oh. uh, it is just, it, it, you know, for me, it kind of, it's just these low tones and then it kind of goes to high tones. It's very slow moving. But the thing that I love about Tone Works okay. is that you can create it in a loop format and um, you sit down, you ask your question, what tone do I need to, and remember, be as literal as you can with your body. What right. tone do I need to? And then as soon as you ask the question, let the music just kind of flow in through the front of your body, out through the back of your body for about 20 minutes. Then you can turn it down really low and get up and do stuff around the house and the, your body still responded. So, okay. so even though it takes longer than color works, um, music doesn't move quite as fast as color. Um, you can do it while you're driving the car, whatever, because it's not putting you in an altered state. So, so when I laugh and say it's gross, it's like if I'm doing a live show and, and I decided to play it, I'm just kind of sitting there cringing because my body is just literally vibrating so violently during it. But that's what you really want to do when you're sick, right? Right. Is, is you're bringing vibration into the cells to okay. shape the cell to remove the emotion. So color will do that and tone do that. So the more that the tone vibrates that cell, okay, more gunk is going to come out of it. So, you know, my son and I, I mean, we, we are a family who work on ourselves constantly and, and are very mindful of our work. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. You do so, that. So the vibration for me just is violent because it's just shaking my whole body instead of like an, an area. But um, so I, I'm laughingly saying that, but it, it's a, an amazing CD. And, and like I said, it's it's the highest, uh, wow. uh, highest selling CD in the world. Well, I'm going to grab one of those because I think that's really cool. And it's yeah. on Amazon. And you guys, it's Tone Works, T-O-N-E Works. You know, and I'm going to have some people on the show Um and I think about a month that uh, do healing with music uh -huh. and 
Yeah. And that'll, because I really believe in the healing with music too. And it's interesting that you've told me this because I didn't realize you did that. I always feel like the harp and I just feel this intuitively and I don't know why, yeah. but I always feel like the harp uh, can do that magic. Uh, Have you picked up on that? Crystal, crystal bowls. I mean, but, but right. you know, I've had, I've had many people who have been professional singers um, okay. you know, have their own albums and they're superstars and they're like, I sing every day and I'm still sick. And it's like, but you're not a two things. A, you're not programming your body before you start singing. You know, what tone do I need to fix my frozen shoulder? They're not saying the words. They're not saying the words. And then secondly, the human voice doesn't have the range um, that okay. that you may need. So it may need a range. And that's why I'm saying is get something, even symphony music, um, orchestra music that has a wide range because your body's taking in a, a different note every second. And so if you've got something that's just kind of, you know, staying within a range, um, you, you'll feel better but you won't get all of them. And it, Im imagine it this way, Nancy. Let's say you stored frustration in your right kidney. Okay. And, and so you start to play music, a tone, whatever, and maybe you start feeling a little bit better, but it's still stuck. You've yeah. got to remember, maybe you felt frustration a thousand times, and every single time you felt frustration, you felt frustration at a different level. So every single one of those layers is a different vibration which is why you have to be able to have the fluctuation because this may be a, been a really light frustration. You know, the, the, the dog ran out the doggy door and ripped it, or, right. you know, I'm really frustrated because a car just hit me and, and um, right. different know, levels, you got different levels. And so you need different tones or different colors in order to, um, to get through all those layers. So you can't just play one music or, you know, one level of, of, um, you know, like just a harp, um, you've got to, it may make you feel better, but it's not necessarily going to get down to all the layers that you need to get down to. That's really interesting. And you mentioned the crystal bowls. You know, I've read a lot about that too. Is that similar as long as you use different bowls with different vibrations? So it's the same thing. And they, right? they really need to be in concert with each other because, because the body and watching it, the body will shift from you know, fraction of a second to a fraction of a second between tones. So okay. if you're just using one and then you switch to another, I'll never forget um, lecturing in, in uh, Hawaii. And they took me high in a banyan tree and they had kind of a platform in this banyan tree. Oh, wow. People sat all around me with different tones of, you know, different size of crystal bowls and so forth. How and cool. laid me flat on that platform, and then they played it. It was amazing, just cool. absolutely amazing. So you know, there's there's so much that that we can do. Again, you know, the self empowerment of right. um, realizing how much we can do. You know, yes, it's helpful at times to have a practitioner help guide you in terms of where you need to go. But you know, we have a we have a rule here. Um, at PCI that if you're working with, you know, let's say fibromyalgia or an upset stomach or something like that, you can mm -hmm. only call me three times. If I tell you what the issue is and I give you homework, I expect you from that point on to take care of it. If right. you're at stage four cancer and, you know, when things are, are really wiggly between your, you know, chemo or whatever it is you're doing, Yes, I'll, I'll attach to you and, and I'll help you through that time period or help you cross, um, whatever the case may be. Um, but if it's, if it's everyday life that, you know, we all get frustrated with or get sick with, then, then that's, that's three times and I expect you to be able to handle it. And they may call back 15 years later and go, oh, okay, well now I've got, you know, this going on and it may be more severe and so I'll work with them more. You, when we first came on the, the show, you said you've been working with somebody. Would you mind talking about it a little bit? Is that okay? Uh, so, so this is just someone who has um, been dealing with cancer um, and had um, developed um, ascites, the, the fluid on the belly, and just been really struggling. And okay. we made a three-week commitment. And so what that means is I work 20 hours a day. Wow. 
for four days and then I cut it down to uh, 12 hours on the fifth day and then I go back to four days straight at 20 hours a day. And, um, and I'm attached to them and I'm adjusting their body and when they're getting chemo, when they're getting um, uh, radiation or, you know, they're getting fluid removed, whatever, I'm, I'm right there with them and they're on the West Coast. So when you say attached, you mean your vibration is attached? My your soul is attached? Or? My body is attached. So, so it was cute. The, the one thing that I can't eat that causes severe heartburn for me is pizza. Okay. And so the other night, I'm just like, my heartburn was just, and I never get it. It was horrible. And, um, and she wrote me the next morning and she's like, oh my gosh, for the first time in two years, I had pizza last night. And I'm like, oh, tell me. Oh. <laughs> so it affects you. you had. So, oh my so, you know, I vomit and diarrhea during those 20 hours. And so my body processes through everything. So, you know, that's the, that's the one thing about my body is my body has always processed um, my clients. And so, you know, it's me knowing how much my body can handle, how much it can Well, handle. yeah. Has it taken a toll on you, Patty, or no? You look great. I'm on, I'm on video with her, and she looks great, you guys. So I, I can't see where it's taken a toll. But do you ever feel, but God protects you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people will say, well, why don't you ask God to make it easier on you? And I'm like, God knows exactly what it does uh, for me, mm -hmm. but it makes me take time for myself. You know, I, I uh, make sure that I take time in between, you know, heavy duty clients like this um, right. because it does take a toll. And then I sleep or play with the grandbabies or, you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, that, rejuvenate. That rejuvenate and, mm. and uh, get out in my swim spa or just, you know, whatever. And it's not that I can't function throughout the day. It's just my consciousness and my body is attached to the client. It doesn't matter where in the world they are. You can so, do it. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's that's, crazy. Just, that's just part of my gift. That's hey, we, we've got about one minute. I can't believe the show went by this quick um, for us today. And I did, <laughs> Patty, thank you. You are such a God, you are a godsend. I mean, you accepted this work um, and the Lord asked you and you said yes. And all the people you've healed. I mean, I, wow, that's such a fantastic thing, you know, that you do for people. Very blessed. I mean, I've, I've been very blessed and, and, uh, well, you know, give everybody your contact information and how to find you before we get off the air here. It's uh, pattyconklin.com, like you said, P-A-T-T-I-C-O-N-K-L-I-N, or they can call 404-474-0086 uh, and talk with Sandra at the office and, and uh, go to the website or call Sandra, one of the best ways to reach me. Well, and yeah. thank you for being here today. You've taught me so much and I just think the world of you and I appreciate you. And when your when your new book comes out, you better come back and see us cuz absolutely will. I can't wait. Yeah, I really look forward to reading it because all the information is is really good and really helpful. And um, you guys, thanks for joining us. And next week we have another terrific guest and on High We've Road for more stories filled with wisdom, love, and hope for our future. To sign up. I think I'm doing good. I appreciate all you do. I'm going to grab that. Uh, I'm going to grab that Toneworks CD. Grab Toneworks. Grab Toneworks. Because most people, they love it. You know, there's a few that dislike it, but but most people love it. So grab I'm it. it yeah. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Your blessing. Take, Take care. care. Bye -bye. All right. Bye. Ben, all right. yes, see you later. All right. Have a good weekend. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.